Today, I will show you how I built this one-of-a-kind prototype of a permanent magnet motor. The motor can reach 600 RPM with a single coil. Stay tuned to find out how I built it. Firstly, I 3D printed an empty spool. I wound the first coil which will go in front of the spool. The coil is made of 240 churns of 24 gauge magnet wire. I made a second coil of 640 churns of magnet wire that will go around the spool. I designed a spacer that will help bring the electromagnet closer to the rotor magnets. Also, I attached some stainless steel screws to secure the electromagnet to the frame of the motor. These three permanent magnets, 7 eighths of an inch by 1 and a half inches combined, will be used for the stator. The copper fittings will go over the permanent magnets and act like a shield. The copper is not able to cancel out the magnetic field, but rather redirect it or change the magnetic field. This will help focus the magnetic field at the front of the magnet. This is not the typical electromagnet that runs the motor. In this case, the permanent magnets inside the electromagnet will perform the work by attracting the rotor half of the cycle and repelling the motor the other half of the cycle. The electromagnet will be energized for only 10 degrees of the rotation to momentarily cancel out or redirect the magnetic field until the rotor passes by and the cycle repeats itself again. I designed a rotor that is 13 inches in diameter. I have 40 neodymium permanent magnets that will be installed in the rotor. They are 5 eighths of an inch by 5 eighths of an inch with a pull force of 42 pounds each. The permanent magnets are installed so that they are offset in relation to the center. On one side, they are extremely close to the end of the rotor, and on the other side, they are further away. Half of the magnets are facing north polarity, and the other half are facing south polarity. I also 3D printed some counterweights to balance out the rotor, since the permanent magnets are shifted to one side and the rotor is out of balance. The rotor is finally finished. Now it's time to put everything together. I am using a half an inch acrylic in the construction of the motor which will be able to support the high RPM of the motor. At first, I attempted using this switch as a timing switch. I laser cut a disc that will determine when the switch will turn on and off. The downside on this switch is that it's hard to tell how long the switch stays on each revolution. With this switch, the maximum rotation of the rotor is 432 RPM, which is 7.2 rotations per second. I installed a threaded bolt in the back of the electromagnet so that the spacing between the permanent magnet on the stator and the rotor can be adjusted back and forth. The pulse length should be approximately the width of three permanent magnets combined, which is about 25 degrees, but we will energize the coil for only 10 degrees of the rotation in order to reduce the power intake. Also, I built a new contact timing wheel that's been adjusted to a 10 degree pulse. This means that the motor will be energized for a very short period of time and the rest of the 350 degrees of the rotation, the rotor is being accelerated by the single permanent magnet on the stator, first through repulsion and then through attraction. This shows where the motor requires help the most. The electromagnet will be energized at the perfect position. The motor is all complete and the batteries were installed permanently so the whole motor can be portable. I tried to balance out the rotor but it is not perfect yet. One can see that by the shaking of the table. The combined churns of magnet wire on both coils is 880 churns. Higher voltage is required to overcome the resistance of the wire. The rotor contains 40 magnets and is very heavy. It acts as a flywheel. With a single electromagnet, it takes about a minute to achieve full speed. With a single permanent magnet slash coil on the stator, the rotor can achieve about 600 RPM, which is 10 rotations per second. 
Theoretically, with six permanent magnets on the stators slash coils, this motor could reach a speed of 3,600 RPM or 60 rotations per second, which is approximately what a standard induction motor operates at. The batteries will have to power only one coil at a time because they will all be spaced apart at a different timing. Power can be extracted from the motor mechanically through a pulley or slash and the back EMF or the collapsing field energy of the motor can be arranged to power a load or recharge its own batteries. Two diodes were installed to rectify the collapsing field energy, all attempt to power a load of a strand of LEDs. The voltage input is around 25 volts DC, and the current input is very low, which allows the electromagnet to stay at a low temperature while performing work. I will build a lamp that will be powered by the back EMF. With a laser, four mirrors were cut out, which will be installed inside the casing of the lamp. This strand of LEDs will be used to make the lamp. This LED strand requires 100 volts DC to power on. The back EMF from the coil will generate a spike that's above 100 volts DC. Since the pulse width will be very short, also the back EMF will be short as well. The light will not be able to stay on at full cycle, rather it will flash when the coil collapses. This design will be able to reflect and magnify the brightness of the light. The light is finished and ready for testing. A few things I would change if this motor was to be replicated. Firstly, use larger permanent magnets on the rotor, say 3 quarters of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch or 1 inch by 1 inch. Secondly, use multiple permanent magnets slash coils on the stator, say 2, 4 or more coils. Thirdly, use an optical switch and or transistor or MOSFET for the timing. Fourthly, balance out the rotor perfectly. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as it helps support me make new videos just like this one.